Hello dear students this is Chetan Prajapati assistant professor MA Parikh Fine Arts and Arts College Palanpur today we are going to discuss Virginia Woolf before we start our discussion i would like to advise you that when you listen to these audio lectures sit with a pen and a paper with you while listening make notes of the important points like the nobel prize winning year other important awards some crucial information about the author and the work some important dates and some important lines like who said what about the writer and the work we are discussing about this process of learning will make your learning more attentive after the audio session is over go through the pamphlets that have already been dispatched in the classroom and make a comparison i guarantee you that this way of learning will be quite helpful hope these instructions and the lecture would remain fruitful okay then let us start our discussion virginia wolf was born into a privileged english household in 1882 and she was raised by free thinking parents she began writing as a young girl and published her first novel the voyage out in 1915 she wrote modernist classics including mrs dalloway to the lighthouse and orlando as well as pioneering feminist works like a room of one's own and three genies in her personal life she suffered bouts of deep depression she committed suicide in 1941 by drowning herself in a river at the age of 59 so this is some of the important informations of virginia wolf this question is many time asked in the examination that how did virginia wolf commit suicide so she committed suicide by drowning herself in the river wolf is considered to be one of the most important 20th century novelists a modernist she was one of the pioneers of using stream of consciousness as a narrative device alongside contemporaries such as Marcel Proust, Dorothy Richardson and James Joyce. Encouraged by her father, Wolf began writing professionally in 1900. Her father's death in 1905 caused another mental breakdown for Wolf. Following his death, the Stephen family moved from Kensington to the more bohemian Bloomsbury. where they adopted a free spirited lifestyle it was in bloomsbury where in conjunction with the brothers intellectual friends they formed the artistic and literary bloomsbury group following her 1912 marriage to leonard wolf the couple founded the hogarth press in 1917 which published much of her work actually this press hogarth press was founded by leonard wolf just to kill the loneliness of virginia wolf so the couple rented her home in sussex and moved there permanently in 1940 throughout her lifetime wolf was troubled by her mental illness she was institutionalized several times and attempted suicide at least twice her illness is considered to have been bipolar disorder for which there was no effective intervention during her lifetime in 1941 at the age of 59 wolf died by putting rocks in her coat pockets and drowning herself in the river ouse at lewes now after having discussed some of the important biographical details of virginia wolf let us go on to detail a uh, discussion of virginia wolf's works So let us begin our discussion with the first novel The Voyage Out. Her first novel The Voyage Out was published in 1915 at the age of 33 by her half brother's imprint Gerald Duckworth and Company Limited. This novel was originally titled Melimbrosia. So sometimes it would be the question in the examination that what was the first original title of The Voyage Out? so note down it was melimbrosia i would spell the word m e l y m b r o s i a melimbrosia so this novel was originally titled melimbrosia but wolf repeatedly changed the draft an earlier version of the voyage out has been reconstructed by wolf scholar luis de salvo and is now available to the public under the intended title 
De Salvo urges that many of the changes Wolf made in the text were in response to changes in her own life. The novel is set on a ship bound for South America and a group of young Edwardians on board and their various mismatched yearnings and misunderstandings. In the novel are hints of themes that would emerge in later work including the gap between preceding thought and the thought and the spoken word that follows and the lack of concordance between expression and underlying intention together with how these reveal to us aspects of the nature of love. Another famous work by Virginia Woolf is Mrs. Dalloway. Mrs. Dalloway was published in 1925 and it centers on the efforts of Clarissa Dalloway, a middle-aged society woman, to organize a party even as her life is paralleled with that of Septimus uh, Warren Smith, a working class veteran who has written from the First World War bearing deep psychological scars. And the third very famous novel by Virginia Woolf is To the Lighthouse. To the Lighthouse, published in 1927, is set on two days ten years apart. The plot centers on the Ramsey family's anticipation of and reflection upon a visit to a lighthouse and the connected familial tensions. One of the primary themes of the novel is the struggle in the creative process that beset painter Lily Briscoe while she struggles to paint in the midst of the family drama. So Lily Briscoe is the character in the whole novel who is shown as a painter. So many times this question has also been asked about the profession of Lily Briscoe. So she was a painter. The novel is also a meditation upon the lives of a nation's inhabitants in the midst of war and of the people left behind. It also explores the passage of time and how women are forced by society to allow men to take emotional strength from them. Very important to note down is that the novel is divided into three parts like the window, time passes and the lighthouse. Many times this question is also asked in the examination that which are three parts of to the lighthouse. So the three parts of the novel are the window, time passes and the lighthouse. Let us talk about another biographical novel that is Orlando. Orlando, a biography published in 1928 is one of Virginia Woolf's lightest novels. A parodic biography of a young nobleman who lives for three centuries without aging much, much past 30 but who does abruptly turn into a woman. The book is in part a portrait of Woolf's lover uh, Vita Sequile West. <coughs> Let us talk about another novel that is The Waves. The Waves is a 1931 novel by Virginia Woolf. It is considered by many to be her most experimental work and consists of soliloquies spoken by the book's six characters named Bernard, Suzanne, Rhoda, Neville, Jeannie and Louis. Make note of these six characters because you may be asked in the examination who were the six characters in the novel The Waves. So those six characters are Bernard, Suzanne, Rhoda, Neville, Jeannie and Louis. Also important is Percival. Now this is the seventh character in the novel. Though readers never hear him speak in his own voice. The soliloquies that span the character's lives are broken up by nine brief third-person interludes detailing a coastal scene at varying stages in a day from sunrise to sunset. As the six characters or voices speak, Wolf actually explores concepts of individually, uh, sorry, individuality, self and community. Wolf has written only one drama in her lifetime and the title of the drama is Freshwater. Now Freshwater is a short three-act comedy play written and produced by Virginia Woolf in 1935 and the only play she ever wrote. 
it actually satirizes the Victorian era. The play was only performed once in Wolfe's lifetime. Beneath the comed uh, comedic elements, there is an exploration of both generational change and artistic freedom. Both Cameron and Wolfe fought against the class and gender dynamics of Victorianism and the play shows links to both to the lighthouse and room of one's own. Wolfe's only famous non-fiction work is a room of one's own and that really made uh, Wolf's place permanent in the realm of feminist criticism. Amongst Wolf's non-fiction works, one of the best known is A Room of One's Own that was published in 1929. It is a book-length essay, actually, uh, considered a key work of feminism, feminist literary criticism. It was written following two lectures she delivered on women and fiction at Cambridge University the previous year. In it, she examines the historical disempowerment women have faced in many spheres including social, educational and financial. One of her most famous dictum is contained within the book and that is, a woman must have money and a room of her own if she is to write fiction. I would like to repeat this quote which she mentions quite effectively and she emphasizes the fact in the book and the dictum is kindly note down. A woman must have money and a room of her own if she is to write fiction. Much of her argument to show how I arrived at this opinion about the room and the money is developed through the un unsolved problems of women and fiction, writing to arrive at her conclusion, although she claimed that was only an opinion upon one minor point. In doing so, uh, she states a good deal about the nature of women and fiction, employing a quasi-fictional style as she examines where women writers failed because of lack of resources and opportunities, examining along the way the experiences of the Brontes, George Eliot and George Sand as well as the fictional character of Shakespeare's sister, equipped with the same genius but not position. She contrasted these women who accepted a deferential status to Jane Austen who wrought entirely as a woman. Now let us see some important and famous quotes by Virginia Woolf. In A Room of One's Own, Virginia Woolf states, Lock up your libraries if you like, but there is no gate, no lock, no bolt that you can set up. Uh, sorry, I would like to repeat this quote. Lock up your libraries if you like, but there is no gate, no lock, no bolt that you can set upon the freedom of my mind. Now, this very quote shows us how Virginia Woolf talks about the freedom of the women. Another quote which she mentions in Between the Acts, books are the mirrors of the soul. And the third one, again, she quotes the quote, in a room of one's own, that is, one cannot think well, love well, sleep well, if one has not dined well. So, these were some important facts and information about the life and the works of Virginia Woolf. I hope the session would remain fruitful to you. Thank you very much. And once again, I would like to mention that most of the recording of this lecture is done with reference to Wikipedia. Thank you.